Hi, today I'm going to show you how to design and input a flow diagram or flow chart into Word. But firstly, if you want to check which version of Word you have, and the more modern versions of Word will have this icon here, Smart Art. Now, if I just click on Smart Art, you'll see that you have a number of already pre-designed flowcharts that you can use. Now, I'm going to come on to using those later on in the video, because if you don't have this icon, you can easily design your own flowchart simply by using shapes. So, if I want to construct a simple flowchart, first of all, I'm going to um, turn my page round because I would like to have a landscape page. So if I go up to layout and to orientation and click landscape, I've now got a landscape page. If I then go to insert and shapes, there are numerous shapes that I can now use for my flow diagram. So for ease and simplicity, I'm just going to click on this square here. Now, if I begin to draw my square here, or my rectangle, it will move according to my mouse. However, if I hit the shift key, it then turns into a perfect square. The same will happen if I want to construct a circle. If I go to shapes, I click on circle. Now, if I pull down, you'll see that I have an oval shape. But if I hit the shift key, it will turn into a perfect circle. That's just something to note that can be frustrating if you don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to pick a rectangle here. Now, if you want the rectangles in your flowchart to be the same, I would advise that you pick your colour choices and your text and your outlines first, and then you can easily duplicate this rectangle. So at the moment, we've simply got a rectangle. And we have a variety of options up here to change that rectangle to make it look a bit more professional or a bit more exciting. So here you can simply change the colours, but if you don't like any of these colours, then you can simply check on this icon here and you can pick the colours from here or you can click on more fill colours and then you can simply move this icon around to whatever choice of colour you choose and it's any colour of the rainbow. Okay, so the other options you have in this menu, you can come down here and you can see that we've got gradients and we've got simple outlines and further gradients at the bottom here. So I'm going to click on this gradient here. In addition to this, you've also got a shape outline. So let's say, for example, I wanted a red outline. And as you can see, there's a small red border that goes to the outside of this box. Now, because I've chosen this particular style of box, it's not showing all the way around the outside. If you wanted to change that, then you could simply go to the top and click on a normal square and your shape outline, and it will go all the way around. So you do have to play around with these different designs. So if this particular outline isn't thick enough for me, then I can simply, if I click off this pane, if I click on shape format and double click on the shape, you will see that shape format appears on the right hand side. Now I'm currently online here. This is the fill element, so this is the inside of your shape. So it's currently on a solid fill colour and your colour, again, you can change your colours over here if you wish to do so. You can also change your gradient fill, 
you can change the colours here if the uh, variety of colours up here don't suit your needs. And then you can also play around with the transparency um, and really customise it to what you want. So if I go down to line here, we're currently on a solid fill line and we're currently on red. And if I want to increase the width of that line, I can simply check the up arrow and as you can see that line is getting thicker. I can also change the style of my line. I can have two lines, I can have dotted lines, or I can simply have a plain line. Or I can have obscured lines, but you can play around with whatever you want. So once I've got my outline that I want, I can also play around with shape effects. So if I click on shape effects, you can see that we can add shadows, reflections, glows, soft edges, beveled edges, and 3D rotations. So for example, if we went for a slight shadow and then a 3D rotation, say we went for a slightly flat version, then you can see how it changes the shape. Right, let's just pop that up to normal. And then I'm going to put a beveled edge on my box here. So once I've decided that's the star that I want, I can then simply type the title in my box or the text that I want in my box. Once I've completed that, I can simply go up to copy and paste. So go to copy, go to paste. Now the quick shortcut for doing this is command or control C, command or control V, and you can simply copy and paste. Now, once you've dragged the boxes down, you can see that when you drag them down, they don't always go in the right place or they're not always equally um, split apart. So if you go up to view and you click, click this box here that says grid lines, what you will notice is when you pull and push these boxes, they will almost click into place. And what that does is it allows you to move the boxes equal distances apart because they will click on equal distances apart. If I remove the grid lines, you can now see that the boxes are equally split apart. So I'm going to pull my boxes just down slightly because I just want to demonstrate how to put the, the arrows in. So again, I go to insert, shape, and then I've got a selection of different arrows here that I can use. So let's just say we just want to point downwards. So I highlight, I click on the arrow I want and I can simply drag my arrow between the two boxes. If I want to change that arrow, again, if this box isn't showing, if you highlight the arrow by clicking on it and double click, your format shape um, drop down menu will appear here. And exactly the same way as we use for the boxes, you can change the width, the size, the color, of your arrows and you can see as I increase the width of my arrow it becomes bigger here and of course I can go up to here and select a different colour. I can then copy and paste, sorry, if I highlight my arrow I can copy and paste my arrow again and simply move them around and they will click into place without the grid line. Now if I wanted to point in a different direction and I wanted to move my sections around then I could again go up to shape and I can click on one of these elbow arrows 
to connect my shape. And again, I can simply drag the arrow to the different section that I need. And again, I can go up, change the color and the width of the arrow. Now you can also change things like the arrow design. So down here, you've got the begin arrow and the end arrow, and that's the type and size. And again, it's just a case of playing around with those different icons um, and selecting the ones that are appropriate for your particular flow diagram. And as you can see here, I've just simply changed them to dots. Now, if you wanted to join two boxes to one box, for example, these two boxes pointing towards this box, then with these elbow joints, you can simply highlight this one, then copy and paste, and then simply move the connectors so that they meet up. And there you have yours connecting to the different boxes. And again, you can play around with the arrowheads, the colours, and the um, widths. Now, don't forget, there are many, many different shapes that you can use for your icons. We've talked briefly about circles. We've also got the options of these diamond shapes, which are also very popular in flow diagrams. And again, if this section here, this drop down menu doesn't appear, you simply double click on your shape, then it will appear here and you can change absolutely everything about this particular box. Sorry, I'm online at the moment, Phil. And then obviously you just, once the box is highlighted, you can just simply type anything you want to. If you want to change the text in this box, you simply highlight the text, go to the home page, go to the drop down and this text area here. And then you can just simply select the different text that you want and it will change the font. If you want to change the size, you can either input it here or you can simply use the arrow keys here to increase the size of your text or you can use the arrow down to decrease the size of your font. You can also use word art. You can go in and select a particular type of word art that you like and it will just simply change it for you. You've got lots of number styles to choose from in here. And of course, if you want to underline it, turn it into, into italics, uh, unbold, bold, so there are many different font options up, up in this menu here on the home menu on the home tab, because of course it will do uh, all the things that you'd expect it to do when changing normal text in a document. So if you have a newer version of Word, you can use the presets already loaded for your flow diagrams. If you go to the insert tab and go along to smart art, you can see there's a list of all the different uh, uh, flow diagrams or matrix that you might want to use. So if we go along to this hierarchy one and we just click on a very simple design, you can see that they've already um, built in this particular flow diagram for you. And if you click on this arrow here, it gives you options here to change the diagram to suit your needs. Now, this particular one works very much like a family tree. So if I wanted to add boxes below this, these three boxes, or simply add boxes to the left and right, if I click on one of the lower boxes here, and then I check on this icon up here, which says add, you can see I begin to add boxes below the line of three. Now these generally work in lines of three. So if I continue to add, I would just continue to add boxes of three. Now, if I wanted four boxes in a row, all I needed to do is promote a box. So I click on the box I want and I simply click on this arrow here which says promote and it will go up the next line up to the next line and form a row of four. 
Again, if I wanted to add another one, I'd simply add, promote, and it would go along to five boxes. Again, if I wanted to add text to the right of this, sorry, a box to the right of this, if I click this box and add, it will add a box to the right because the line is going from left to right. If you now wanted to change the colour and design of your flow diagram, that's very simple to do. They've given you an, a lot of different options at the top here. So if I wanted to click on the different bevels, again, they give you lots of different options by just clicking on this lower arrow here. And then if you wanted to change the colour, then obviously you've got lots of different options in this change colours icon here. Now to write in each box, you simply click on it and begin to type and it will automatically fill in that box for you. Or you can simply click to the right, the left here and again type, oops, you can simply type whatever you need to in that particular box. If you want to change the background colour of the box here, if you double click inside the box, you'll see a drop down menu come up on the right hand side giving you format shape options. Again, we work with the fill, which is the centre part, and we work with the line, which is the outer border of the box. So if I decided that I wanted a colour in the background of my diagram, I can simply go to solid fill. I could pick my colour. So I'm going to pick light grey. I can move the transparency so that I could have it lighter or darker. I could have a gradient fill. Right Again, I can change the colours here. I'm just going to do something bonkers so that you can see what I'm trying to achieve. And you can play around that and fully customise it. And again, if you decided you wanted to change the outline, you could go to line solid fill, along to the colour, let's go for something bright so you can see it. If I check off it, you can see the red line that runs around the outside. If you didn't want a line, if you didn't want the line, you simply click no fill. Sorry, we've gone from text options to shape options. So you just simply click on no fill or no line. For the text options, you could have a different colour text and text outline. You could outline your text. Can just very faintly see if I just zoom in you can see that the outline of your text is outlined and again you can really play around with these you can increase the width of that um, outline to or as big or as small as you wish so you can fully customize this particular flow diagram um, to whatever your needs are. Now, if you decided that you wanted to move this around your page, as you can see at the moment, it's stuck. So what I need to do is I need to go to Layout. I need to go along to Wrap Text. Click on the down arrow, click on Tight. And once I've done that, I simply click on the edge of the diagram and you can see now I can move it around my document to where I need it to go. You can also make it bigger and smaller by clicking on the corners of your diagram and simply pulling it across your page. So I hope that's helped you today. Um, if there are any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments box. I do reply to uh, comments and questions. Um, if it's helped you, please subscribe and have a great day.